Gentlemen, this channel is from false prophet David Zachary from He Young's. False prophet that attacked me for exposing him as an alcoholic, a drunk, a false prophet, and a nut. The very same false prophet that accused me for having many channels when I told you people that there are brothers and sisters in Christ out there that have more than one channel. Example would be Dabu777. Another example would be, um, what's that other channel called? Oh, You Two Heaven Bound has more than one channel for the purpose of their ministry. I'm not promoting anyone, I'm just telling you. When you're exposing a false prophet, they will try to discredit you by saying you have more than one channel, which is pointless. Anyway, he accused me of having more than one channel. His allegations turned out to be false, and I have evidence to that effect. Now, this is those who are subscribed to this person. If you look in the back of his mustard, this is a video that he made entitled, What Beer LOL Laugh. It was a response to a video I made for exposing him as the alcoholic that he is. Now, Look back there, you will notice a can of beer behind the mustard. I told you people that he is not going to be stupid enough to make a video telling you people that he drinks alcohol. That's beer back there. Now, let's take this a step further. That is his channel. Uh, excuse me for a minute. I'm going to just go ahead and uh, add to those dislikes. There we go. That's his channel, okay? And I'm going to show you how people have pointed it out. You got your morons that say, uh, I don't see anything of the sort. Well, that person is obviously blind. Anyway, um... People that put thumbs down, you see that? Right there. Go 15... Down. 15 thumbs down 15 thumbs down you guys that's because people know that that's beer behind that can of mustard let's proceed down a little further somebody here pointed out I seen that beer way behind the mustard Okay, and this blind bat said, um, I don't see what beard. That's because you need to put your spiritual eyes on. Okay? And you got, uh, of course, your other minions that, that watches his videos that are obviously, um, the brain cells are depleted for watching his videos. You know, because they don't know truth when it stares at them in the face like this. Anyway, so with that being said, he does drink beer. There's your evidence. You could sit there and, you know, test the spirits with the Lord Jesus Christ, or you can um, not. That's up to you. Okay? But if you want to continue to listen to him, that is a choice you are entitled to make. Anyway, the reason why I'm bringing that attention is so you can understand who you're listening to is a drunk now, this particular individual claims that you can do anything under grace. Anything. I'm not even going to play a portion of this video, okay? I'm not. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what uh, sin does to you over time. I mean age-wise. So let's take a little tour, shall we? And then I'm going to tell you in a nutshell that he's preaching to you people, telling you that just because you're under grace, you could live any way you like. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm just telling you. you got to read between the lines. Now, let's take a look at his aging process, shall we? Oh, excuse me, you guys. Pardon me. You have to please be quiet. Okay? Because the father's asking me to speak on this. I'm speaking to one of my sons, you guys.
I'm being very polite, but when I'm doing the Father's will, I take that very seriously. Now, let's take a look down his memory lane, shall we? Okay. Let's look at a video that he did a year ago. I'm going to try to find it. I will try. All right, you guys, just bear with me a second, and I will try to find a video that he did at least a year ago. Okay, this will work. It's not quite a year ago, but it, it will do. October 28th, 2014. This is what sin does to you if you're not righteous in the Lord Jesus Christ's eyes. Look at that. That's the old man right there. Representation. I mean, that is a physical representation of sin. I've told you this before when I exposed another false prophet by the name of Rachel Sheriff. Now, this right here is sin incarnate. Okay, you guys? Incarnate. Let's do a, a comparison. That's what he looked like in October 2014. Notice the eye, eyes are sinking in his head, and I'm not being critical. But you know in the Bible, the Lord mocks the wicked. That's the wicked right there. Notice. Okay? This is the old man right here. That's why he looks super mad old. Okay? Now... Let's minimize the video, okay? Let's minimize the video, ladies and gentlemen. And um, let's minimize the videos, ladies and gentlemen. That's what he looked like in October 2014. Okay? Now, that's what he looked like in October 2014. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen. You need to seriously be quiet. Okay? It's because I'm trying to do this for the Father. I'm sorry, you guys. Okay. That's what he looked like in October 2014. Let's take another look. There's the date. October 20, 2014. That's how he looks. Now look at how he aged at an astronomical rate. You ready for this? Look at that. What a comparison, guys. That's what being full of demons does to you. That's what living in sin does to you. That's what not being righteous before the Lord Jesus Christ's eyes does to you. That's what claiming to help the homeless but robbing God blind does to you. Now, here's another thing I wanted to explain to you. He's telling you guys, okay? He's telling you guys, I'm under grace. I can do anything. No, you can't do anything. Because just because you are under grace doesn't mean you continue to be a servant to sin. That means that the Father saved us by grace. It is a gift that what he did on the cross, the work he did on the cross, he died for our sins. But it's not for us to continue to live in sin. It's for us to be renewed, to continue to, to shed the old man and live righteous before the Father in the new man. Like it says in Romans chapter 6. You cannot be a, sin, a servant to sin. He was rebuking a, a preacher. I'm not promoting him. But he was rebu rebuking a preacher that was basically saying what I'm saying. That you can't continue to be a servant to sin. And I will let you hear this briefly. Establish the law. Let me take you 
I'm going to stop there for a minute. The preacher was saying that in the churches, they don't talk about repentance. They don't talk about sin. They don't talk about heaven. They don't talk about hell. They don't talk about picking up your cross every day for the Father, which Jesus Christ told us to do, and to avoid sinning, and to confess your sins, go through repentance, go through the correction so that sin could be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. They don't talk about that. They just tell you to say a sinner's prayer. That's it. You don't have to go through the correction. You can still live in sin. And that once saved, always saved doctrine that you're saved by grace. You can still sin in God's eyes and still make it in heaven because Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins. Well, the word of God warns that if you commit sin after repenting, okay, you're taking advantage of the, of the Father's grace. And Hebrews 10, 26 clearly says, if you commit a sin after having the knowledge of that sin, you commit a willful sin, there is no sacrifice left to wash that sin away. That means that you know that it's a sin. You know it's disobedient in God's eyes. You know you have the knowledge that, it, that, that what you're doing is wrong, but yet you still do it anyway. Okay? That is blasphemous in God's eyes. There's no sacrifice to wash that sin away because God did not die on the cross for you and I to keep sinning and to keep living unrighteous. I'm not saying I'm living unrighteous, but I'm saying, or you are, but I'm just saying God didn't die on the cross for humanity to continue to sin and to continue to live displeasing to God, thinking they're going to get in heaven like that. You are saved by grace. God saved you by grace. That is true. But it doesn't mean you're saved um, just because God saved you from this, your sins by grace, okay? It doesn't mean that you could keep sinning because you can't. Because the Bible warns of repent or ye shall perish. Because if you were saved by grace and you could continue to live the way you want, why does the Bible talk about repentance? Why does the Bible warn that for the wages of sin is death? Why does Romans chapter 6 say this? What shall we say then? Shall we continue to sin that grace may be abound? God forbid, how shall we see, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. So we were crucified with Jesus Christ on the cross. We died with Jesus Christ on the cross and we were reborn with the father. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism unto death. Exactly what I just told you, that like that as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, even so we, all, we also should walk in newness of life. We should walk righteous before the Father. Okay, you shed completely the whole way. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So if we are to live holy like the Father... Okay, and we are to live righteous as his sheep. We have to we have to die to sin every day and be reborn in Christ. We have to take up our cross every single day. Knowing this that our old man is crucified with him. I just told you this, guys, that the body of sin might be destroyed. I just told you that that henceforth we should not serve sin. For that is for he that is dead is freed from sin. So you being dead from sin, you're free. You're released by the blood of Christ. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him because God is eternal. When you give your life to Christ and you die to sin, you, grant, you are granted eternal life. For in that he died, for he died unto sin once, but in he that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Jesus Christ, it says in the book of Corinthians, Jesus Christ died for our sins so we could live unto him. Okay? We have to be dead to sin. Live unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Verse 11. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof, lust in the flesh. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Remember, we're all bodies. We're all part of the body of Christ. Members of the body of Christ with Jesus Christ as the head. So neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. In other words, don't give into the flesh. Don't give into sin. 
Give yourselves to God. Surrender to God. Yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And you're in members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Okay? Don't let sin have dominion over you, it says right here. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. So this is saying just because you were saved by God, Jesus Christ, by grace, because he died on the cross for our sins. So we were saved by grace doesn't mean you continue to sin. So that always saved, once saved doctrine doesn't fly here. You're not always saved. If you are sinning, you are under the law because you're breaking it. But if you are not sinning and you're living righteous before God, you're under grace because you're not breaking the law. You're doing what's obedient before God's eyes. You can't expect to get into heaven and sin. It doesn't work that way. It also says right here, what then shall we sin because we are not under the law? That's saying just because you're not under the law, meaning that just because you as a person, I'm going to tell you what under the grace, I spoke about this before. When you are under the law, that means you are, you are sinning. You're breaking the law. You're breaking God's law. That's what under the law means. But if you are not under the law and you're living righteous, you're under grace because God saved us by grace. Grace meaning we were saved by grace. God's, Jesus Christ died for our sins. He saved us by grace. Grace meaning we were freed from our sins. We're freed from our sins to live righteous unto Jesus Christ for God. Not living unrighteously. Okay? But we are not under the law, but we are under... But are, um, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? So God is saying just because you... Conf just because a person is not living in sin anymore, does it mean that they should go back to sinning? Or just because God saved us by grace in the beginning. It was a gift. Does it mean that you should continue to live in sin? No. God saved us by grace. But if you are committing a sin, you're, being, you're placing yourself under the law because you're breaking the law. But if you're living righteously, you, live, you are under the grace of God. So it says right here that you as servants of God have to yield to God. You can't. You cannot live in sin or disobedience in God's eyes. Okay, you can't be servants of sin. You've been made free from sin. When you became free of sin, you, be, you became servants of righteousness. That's right there. Okay, so it says right here in verse 20. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. You were free by the blood of the Lamb. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye were now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. God is saying, what fruit can you justify by living in sin? You're only going to produce evil fruits. And for the wages of sin is death. I told you that. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Eternal life through repent, confessing your sins, repenting, and going through the corrections so those sins can be washed away with the blood of the Lamb. Okay? Living righteousness un righteously unto God. So to say you can do anything, you can't. You can't continue to live in sin. So ladies and gentlemen... This person right here, let me get back to that other one. I was giving you a comparison, remember. That's him in 2014, and look at how he, he aged, like he's mad old. That's the sin nature right there. Alright? If you notice how his eyes are all sunk in and... You know, he's pale here. That's the sin nature, okay? And then how he looks pink, like he got slapped around. See that? I'm not trying to be critical, but his eyes are sunken. That's the old man nature right there. Okay, so to say I'm under grace, I can do anything, that doesn't fly with God. You got to do what God says and live righteous unto the Lord. Don't follow people like this. Now, Jesus Christ told me that he's going to try to do an attack video on me, and I'm waiting on it. And he could say whatever he wants because it's going to be false and full of lies and allegations anyway. And I'm not even going to respond to it. Because Jesus Christ told me he's not going to be able to resist attacking me. 
And Jesus Christ told me to tell him that he's against the father. And if he comes up against God's true servants, God will send him a great shaking. That's what I was told by Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never sent him to speak on his behalf. So y'all test the spirits and be careful with listening to people like this that are full of demons. All right. Full of demons. I mean, look. Look at how sucked in he looks and dried up. And I'm not trying to be critical. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just being real with you. And I'm, you know, I, I came to him. I corrected him before and he refuses correction. He deletes your comments and he blocks you. Okay. So I came to, I came at him. He deletes your comments and he blocks you. And he could sit there and say, oh, I never came to him twice in private. I sure did. He's a liar. That's what false prophets do. They lie. They are tools of Satan. He's a tool of Satan. He's a minister, a gospel of the gospel of Satan. That's what he is. You guys need to be careful. You listen to test the spirits. Okay. Go to Jesus. Ask him if what I tell you is true. And if you are offended by what I have to say, I'm doing my father's will. That's your problem. And I say that in love. You need to take it up with Jesus Christ because I was told to speak on this. Test my spirit. Test this person's spirit too.